Hello, welcome to IHAF Indonesia 2020 course online. This is institution webinar series. My name is Christy Johanna. I'm going to be moderating this seminar. This webinar is going to be presented by Aarhus University from Denmark. Miss, uh, the university uh, representative will do the, the presentation. Please, for the rep the representative, you can do your presentation. Okay, and don't mm -hmm. forget, please stay tuned until the end of this webinar because we will hold a Q&A session. If you have any question about the presentation or anything related to the country's higher education, you can submit your question in YouTube's comment section anytime throughout the presentation. Okay, uh, yes, please welcome Miss. Uh, Ms. Sarah Graham for the yes. presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining me here at uh, this webinar, online webinar, instead of joining us uh, physically in Indonesia. My name is Sarah and uh, I'm from Aarhus University and I work at the International Center here at Aarhus University. And I would like to give you an introduction today on our STEM programs, so primarily our engineering and technology programs. So I'll go through a short introduction and uh, in the end we can have a short uh, Q&A if you have any questions. But please just write the questions during the presentation and we'll, we'll get to that uh, during the end. Uh, the agenda for today, so it will be a little about some information on Denmark and Aarhus, which is the city I'm sitting in right now and uh, we will have some information on Aarhus University in general so and more specific information on our STEM degree programs which I will go uh, come back to more. Um, to follow up please uh, you can sign up for a newsletter by going to our website and uh, feel free to contact me after the seminar it's uh, we would very much like to to talk to you. Um, so Aarhus University is an quite uh, old university. It was founded in 1928, so it's almost 100 years old. We have around uh, 38,000 students here at Aarhus University. Uh, in the background, you can see our beautiful campus, which has been voted one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. Uh, and uh, we have around 1,200, uh, 4,000 uh, international students here as well doing their master's degree, coming on exchange, and uh, from over 120 different countries in the world. It's because we actually have more than 50 uh, master degree programs and a few bachelor degree programs in English. So it's a possibility to come here and join our study programs together with Danish students, but you're always taught in English. So this is Denmark where I'm from. So it's a small country, but located in the middle of Europe. So if you can see up in the uh, right hand corner, you have Denmark here in the middle, but it's very close to London, only an hour and a half in, by flight, Paris, Berlin in Germany. Uh, we have Spain down here. And of course, Norway and Sweden are also very close by. So when it's not Corona times, then it's very easy to, to go abroad and, uh, and visit uh, the, the other countries in, in Europe. So why choose Aarhus? Aarhus University is a top 100 university. Today, we just, we, this is fall, we just got the ranking that we are 69 in the world on the Shanghai ranking, and we are 106 on the Times Higher Education World University ranking. One of our study programs that I will actually cover later is computer science, and it's one of the top 100 uh, in both the QS and the Times Higher uh, ranking. So, and it's actually the highest ranked Q, um, computer science department here in Denmark. So, if you plan on studying computer science, please join us here at Aarhus University. The teaching here are research-based and it is a high level of teaching. 
So all our teachers is always active researchers and our programs are deeply rooted in research. Uh, and they, of course, reviewed on an ongoing basis to meet the highest national and global, global quality standards. Our tuition fees here in Denmark is, and here at Aarhus University is actually quite favorable. So the tuition fee is between 8,000 and 14,500 euros per year. So the STEM degree programs that I'll be introducing to you today is actually 14,500 per year, but I'll get back to that. But we have some tuition fee waivers that, it was, that is reserved for the very talented Indonesian applicants. So we have a specific focus on Indonesian applicants and, and would love to see some more applicants here at Aarhus University. So please consider that. So this is some of the famous alumni we have here at Aarhus University. Actually, our Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark uh, mastered here from uh, political science back in 1995. We also have the CEO, if you know Lego, the small Lego blocks, which are made small plastic Lego blocks. The CEO of Lego is also here from Aarhus University and mastered also back in 1995. We have Bjarne Stavstor, which was, which was the inventor of the C++. If you know a, a bit of a computer science, that is a big thing. Uh, and Lena Hau, who is now a Harvard process, professor, she's the one who stopped lights, was a master from physics back in 86. And least but not the least, the Anders Fogh Rasmussen, who was the former Danish prime minister here in Denmark, but he's actually also the former secretary of general of NATO. So he also mastered from economics back in 1978. So quite a few famous alumni here at, at Aarhus University that's uh, out there in the world. And a bit about Denmark, because Denmark is a small country compared to Indonesia. I think you would agree. We only have a population of 5.8 million citizens. And the biggest city and our capital here in Denmark is called Copenhagen. And because the country is so small, it's only half an hour, uh, three hours away by train ride, uh, or you can take a car and you'll be there. But of course here yeah, at Aarhus where I am, I think it's far away because it's three hours. Uh, the spoken languages are Danish. So everyone speaks Danish because we're here in Denmark, but actually, 90% speaks English. So it is, um, so even if you, you go by bus or you go to the supermarket, most Danes know English and are uh, able to communicate in English. So of course it would be an advantage if you wanted to know a bit of Danish and we have free Danish uh, classes for you to join if you wish to, and you have the interest uh, to know a bit more, but it's actually not necessary because most people know English already. So you can have a life, and especially here at the campus, at the, at the university campus, everyone speaks English. And of course, your study program will be in English. And we think that Denmark is a great place to live because it's the, sa it's the society is safe, secure, and it's very equal. For instance, we are one of the five safest countries in the world. Uh, you can see that at the World Popula Population Review, at the Global Peace Index. And right now, we are one of the two happiest countries in the world. Actually, Norway are a bit more happy than us, but uh, we're always ranked in the top. Uh, a lot of people say it's actually part of being safe and secure, and you know that, uh, uh, that, uh, that everything will be okay, even though you lose your job. We have a great secure network. Uh, so that's partly why I, uh, people are thinking that's why. And then we have the world's lowest level of corruption. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that's a bit a bit of facts from uh, from here from Denmark. And the picture I brought with you today is actually from the deer park, just uh, close close by. You can go to the deer park. It always is very close to nature, and you can actually feed the deers and and give them some carrots. So it's the picture over on your right. And a bit more fun facts about Denmark. Uh, so did you know that Hans Christian Andersen was the author of The Little Mermaid and The Ugly Duckling, some very famous uh, fairy tales? He's actually Danish, he's from Denmark. 
And Denmark is second to only the Netherlands worldwide when it comes to biking. So make sure to get a bike if you ever go here. Everyone bikes wherever you need to go, to campus, to work, uh, to go grocery shopping. I've spoken to a lot of international students that thought in the beginning, ah, they, 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 they did do the public transportation. But after a while, they realized to be, become a truly uh, uh, Danish uh, um, international student, you, you need to get a bike. And they started biking. So that's very nice. And Lego, as you saw, the head of Lego just before was actually invented by a Dane. And the headquarters is just nearby. It's the south of Aarhus, where Legoland is also located. And a lot of tourists is going there every year. And like Indonesia, you'll never, you're very close to the, to the water and to the beaches. We actually have, you're never more than 52 kilometers from the ocean in Denmark. And Aarhus, the city I'm sitting in right now, is right on the ocean side. But of course, uh, you know beaches as well in Indonesia, but we actually have quite a lot of really nice and sandy beaches. And you can drink water from the tap. Uh, the water is so pure here in Denmark. Uh, we, keep, we have a, a lot of uh, water that we pump up into our faucets, in our kitchens and everywhere, and we drink it right from the tap without purifying or or cleansing or anything because it's so clean. And of course, if you don't drink water, you can drink a beer because Denmark is also home of Carlsberg. If you know the big beer company in the world, probably the best beer in the, in the world, I think their slogan is. And here in Denmark, uh, we actually also have approximately 170 mosques in Denmark. Uh, we have a lot of churches, but we have a lot of uh, international uh, foreigners living here um, and also Muslims. So we have a lot of mosques both in Aarhus and around in the country. So Aarhus, a little, little bit about Aarhus. It's a very old city. Uh, it was founded by the Vikings back in the year 948. So it's one of the three oldest cities here in Denmark. Um, but actually, it's the youngest city in Denmark measured by age. Um, and the population is 350,000 people here. So it's the second biggest city in Denmark. So perhaps it's small compared to other cities, but actually, we call it the smallest big city <laughs> in the world because we have everything you need to, to have in order to go to a big city. Um, restaurants, uh, a lot of culture, theater, cinemas, uh, all, all you could wish for. So, but it is a very young city, as I said, uh, because it's actually Denmark's student city number one. So besides from Aarhus University, where if you remember it, we have around 38,000 students. That's actually 52,000 students just here in Aarhus. Um, because we have other, a lot of other um, um, people that educate as well. Uh, if you have other interests, you, you should look into that as well. And it's actually, because it's a university city, 33% of the people living here in Aarhus are university educated. So it's a very highly educated city if you join us here. And a lot of people work in high, have high careers in, in, uh, in, and, and doing their careers and staying here in Aarhus after they finish their degree. And this is actually the view from one of the beaches is very nearby. I think from where I'm sitting, it's two kilometers and we have a beautiful view of what we call the infinity bridge. You can walk around and you have the, the sea and the harbor on, on your left side. So it's also a picture here from Aarhus. So student life. So when you um, come here as an international student, uh, we have an intro week for all of you. We have a specific intro weeks from, from, for the different faculties. So if you're joining us for a STEM degree or an engineering degree or IT, we have an intro program specifically for you, for all the international students, and then specifically on your own study program. Uh, that's always an intro. So that's in the, in the end of August. And then the studies start in the beginning of September, if you'll jo be joining us here the summer and if it's during the winter, uh, the intro will be in the end of January and then the studies will start in the beginning of February. So it just depends on when you're joining us for what semester, if it's the winter intake or the summer intake. 
here in Aarhus, we have something we call the student house. It's a big uh, community of students meeting up and doing all kinds of social activities. And it, they have an international club where a lot of international are joining and they have a lot of activities for international students. And you can, if you go to the student house in Aarhus, you can have a look at their event uh, site and see all, all the different activities they have. Um, we have something we call Friday bars, especially for students. Uh, so you meet at the study program and even actually the researchers and teachers will be joining you and you have a, you can have a chat, you can uh, have a cup of coffee or a beer and have a chat with your fellow students and other internationals and actually teachers and professors as well. And there's a lot, as I said, a lot of clubs and organizations besides the student house. You get student gift discounts uh, in, in the city when you have your student card here from Aarhus University. And of course, this is the place to be for foodies. So if you love coffee or food, we have uh, Michelin restaurants and street food and coffee and cafes and all kinds of things in the center of Aarhus. Um, it's a possibility for you when you arrive here to get a student job. So um, most students work while they study, uh, also the Danish students. They have, for instance, a job 10 to 20 hours a week in a relevant position. And if you join us here as an international student, uh, you will be able to do that as well. So the picture you see on your left-hand side, that is Aros Art Museum. So it's the Aarhus uh, Museum of Art. It's quite famous for the rainbow panorama on the, up, on the top of the building. So we have some, some girls jumping here. Have a lot of music festivals when we don't have corona <laughs> and we have something we called hygge if you ever heard about denmark perhaps hygge is one of the words you heard so we love to have a nice time to sit and join our friends and right now it's a dark time because it's winter time so we light a candle and put a blanket on and just hygge we we join in to have some cozy times and of course, if you're an international student here, you have 24-7 access to our libraries in most of the buildings with your access student card. So I would like to show you a short movie with Candace Stevens, who is an American uh, student here at Aarhus University. She was so kind to, uh, um, to make, uh, let me just, I just need to, um, I'll just find it. I'm so sorry. I'm having difficulties finding my things here. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, let me try and see if you can hear the video. You see it? Okay, Miss Sarah, if you maybe uh, 
have any other information that you can share because it seems that we cannot really hear the uh, sound from the video. Maybe uh, if there any other information or maybe we can move to the Q&A session. I think it's really interesting from the video, like even from the video, we can see that the life in Denmark is really interesting. Sarah, can you hear me? Okay, thank you, Mr. Jean. Where are you can you hear me? And I was told you might have problems uh, hearing yeah. the sound. Yes. Uh, we were testing it just before we, uh, but apparently uh, it's uh, it's not the same. So I was just told I have ten minutes left. Uh, yeah, so Maybe let we me... can move to the Q and A session. Yes, let's do that. Okay, uh, I already gathered some questions from the yeah. YouTube uh, chat. So we have first question. Um, for bachelor degree, is there yes. a minimum IB score to enter? Like this is a specific question from an IB student, I guess. Yes, of course. It always uh, depends on uh, what you need, what you want to study, uh, what your score needs to be. But I know I have some colleagues uh, at business and uh, our business school, Aarhus BSS, and they're actually doing quite a lot of presentations for IB, school, uh, IB students. So I think uh, if you send me an S, uh, a email to sarg um, at au.dk, uh, I can send you, uh, send you an email to her and she will be able to tell you the exact amount because I know it's very easy for us here at Aarhus University to look at your scores and say if you are eligible for to get in here at, at a bachelor's degree. And usually it's not a problem if you're from an international school. Okay, uh, thank you for the answer. Um, so there's the next question. Someone asking about uh, MBA program or economics program. What kind yeah. of program that? We do not, uh, we do, unfortunately, we don't have any MBAs in, in English. We only have MBAs in Danish. So, but we do have uh, economic programs. If you go to masters.au.dk, you can see all of our programs in English. And we do have an economic program as well. You can join um, and different business school programs, but no MBA, unfortunately. Okay, so another question. I think this is more to general question. For the international students that are interested to work part-time, like is there any maximum working hours for them? Uh, yes, if it depends on if you're here from uh, the European Union or you're an international student coming from outside of Europe. I think it's around, I actually have it right here, I think. Let me just see. Um, I'll just leave this on and you can always write to me and I'll answer more specific, but you can get, you, it's 20, around 20 hours a week you can work and then you can work during the holidays. But you actually get a work visa, so if you're an international student here and you get to live and join us, you, you are allowed to work as a student. Okay, and again, for a bachelor degree, is there any age limit to apply for the bachelor degree? No, there's not. No. You just need to be eligible. We are looking at your your degree and what did you what you studied, and uh, then you can join us if you you if we if you meet the requirements. 
Okay, straightforward answers. And we have question. Someone asked, uh, like someone already uh, looked at the website and said that there's a lot of major offers, but only four is delivered in English. Uh, and the rest is Dennis. Is that true? Or like, I think you can see from the uh, presentation I, that... Yes, I think we, we have 50 master's degrees programs offered in English, but we only have, I think, three bachelor's programs offered in English. So if, it's true if you looked at bachelor's programs, then it's certainly true. It's, it's uh, not possible to, to find, a, find that many, but if you're looking to join us on a master's degree, then we certainly have a lot of offers. So um, perhaps you should have a look again. You can join us, you can go into this international au.dk and there you can have a look at all the programs we offer. Okay, and uh, another question, uh, can you give more detailed explanation about the documents that is required to apply to the university? The documents, yes, yes. when you apply, you need, let me just see, you go to this, uh, you, first of all, you select the master's program you want to join. You can find it also here, master's AUDK. And then your application needs to be submitted online through the application portal. And actually right now the application portal is open. It opened here on November 1st. And for uh, students from Indonesia, you need to apply before the 15th of January. So right now you can actually go to the website and start your application. And it's true, in order to complete the, the application, you need to provide a lot of different documents. And you can see right here, I wrote this address. There's a, I have, we have a whole description of the application procedure. For instance, you need to, to, uh, to have your um, papers from your, from your bachelor's degree uh, uploaded and your course descriptions uh, that describe which courses you took on your de uh, bachelor's degree um, and a grading scale so we can see how to, uh, to, uh, to uh, transfer your grades into something that our uh, uh, university understands. So there's a whole lot of documents you need. But if you have any specific questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Um, you can write to me or you can write to some of my colleagues at the application, uh, at the, uh, application office. And I think I have it right here. The admissions office is always happy to help regarding questions like this. Okay, so another question. Um, like someone asked about the scholarship. I think previously you already like explained about the scholarship that they like funding fee waivers. Yes. Like for the fee waivers for Indonesian students, is it only for master students or is it also applied for bachelor degree students? It's only if you apply for a master degree. Uh, and it depends on if you apply for STEM, we have tuition fee waivers and we actually have um, a, a lot of waivers available for select top students from Indonesia because it's a focus of, of ours. Um, and then we've been um, been in contact with uh, the embassy here, Indonesian embassy here in, in Denmark regarding the LPDP. And Denmark is currently not on the list, but, uh, Indone but they told us that Indonesian students are still able to, to study here in Denmark and, uh, and get full support of the LPDP as long as you as an applicant can provide supporting documents um, and um, um, that, that your preferred major at our, at for instance, Aarhus University ranks top of the field of your studies. And most of our uh, study programs certainly do. And right now we are in contact with the embassy. So if you have any uh, also questions regarding L LPDP, please contact us and then we'll make sure to to bring it forward to the embassy. But our tuition fee waivers and scholarships are only for available for select top students uh, at the master's degree level. Thank you for your answer, Ms. Sarah. Uh, okay, uh, next question. Um, what about the English requirement score? Like, do you need 
uh, TOEFL or like do you re like require an IELTS score? Uh, yeah, I have it right here. So yes, you need to, to do uh, an English language test. It could be either TOEFL and uh, you need to score uh, 83 um, to, to get in or you can do your IELTS uh, where it's 6.5. There can be other, the Cambridge or other English tests. Uh, it's just important that it's not more than two years old. Uh, if you did not do your English te test yet, um, you can uh, submit, uh, when you do your application, you can submit that you actually applied to do it, and then you need to submit your English language test uh, in May. So you can actually wait to submit your results from your English language test, test if it's a problem to, uh, to get the test results before the 15th of January. But we just need to know that you actually uh, have uh, booked an English test. So the receipt, receipt from your booking is enough uh, to upload right now. And then we just need your test results uh, uh, before the 1st of May. Okay. Um, again, thank you for your answer. Um, what about the length of the study for the bachelor degree program and then for the master program? Like, what is the uh, the link the yes the length of the study yes uh, you can go to this page here international au.dk and if you uh, click education uh, you will be able uh, to see both the bachelor's and uh, the master's uh, degree uh, programs and you choose what you would like to see we also have summer university we have uh, different kinds of offers and you can see everything on, on this page Okay, so um, for like, this is like the question already started to get more specific. Yes, um, So that's okay. Like is a bachelor degree holder in history eligible to apply, uh, to apply to for a program in so human security? Hmm. It's a good question. Usually I would say that you need to look at the program specific requirements. So we have some requirements uh, that, um, that you need to have a relevant and recognized university degree. So a relevant university degree uh, for, for instance, human security, your, the engineering program. Um, so it's hard to tell because they would also, so they would look at your course descriptions to see if they match uh, what they thought would think would be relevant. Uh, and human security also would have some specific uh, um, requirements that you then need to fulfill. So that's what they would have to look at. But usually if it's, it needs to be relevant uh, for the human and if it's hard for me to tell which courses you, you did as a history student. So it would, uh, they would look at your course descriptions and see uh, if you're eligible. But you actually need to apply. You, we cannot do a pre-assessment, but you can always write uh, to our uh, admission um, and ask. Sometimes they can already see that this will be a problem or mm, you have to admit your application in order to get the right answer. But uh, try, try and send an, an email to the admission office. Okay, uh, there's an interesting question over here. Uh, since it's pandemic, someone yeah. asked like, uh, do you have any virtual programs? Do you have online programs? Right now, uh, we don't have uh, full online programs, but it's uh, in these uh, days, because it's Corona, a lot of our student, students are actually having both virtual and physical um, lectures. So sometimes if they have a lot of students, they would say like half of them will do a physical lecture and the other half would be at home and, and stuff like that. And in periods, there will be virtual lectures only, but uh, you are not able to sign up for online. Uh, we don't have online study programs. Um, so I don't know if it's answered the questions that yeah, some, think... some uh, yeah, lectures will be probably be online, but uh, uh, we don't offer online master's programs. The but uh, actually, just one point. Uh, I know that our summer university right now is looking to do only online. 
So if you're looking to do one uh, study, one course or uh, within a field, have a look at the summer university because I know that they're doing uh, everything online this year. They already decided that right now because uh, uh, they're not sure it will be safe to travel this summer. So this, they decided that the summer courses and summer here in Denmark is, so it's in July and August. There's a lot of courses, a lot of ECTS uh, you can do, uh, which will be purely online. Okay, um, another question. I, I saw that there are several questions asking about this. Um, is there any animal husbandry or animal science program? Uh, we have a lot of uh, agro uh, programs. Uh, let me just, I have a list of the, here. This is the, in the natural science, uh, our programs here. So, and this is our technical science. And as you can see uh, on the, oops, sorry. At the right hand side, we have ag agrobiology uh, and biodiversity and ecology. So it's not on animals, but of course, because it's a, it, it, I mean, you see it's related. It's re related programs, but we do not uh, have any animal uh, degrees, so to speak in animals. So we have, uh, uh, biology, for instance, or yeah, so that I think that's the closest we, we get to working with animals. Okay. Um, so um, since you said that uh, that computer science is your uh, your best program, can you tell us more about the computer science yeah. program? I think computer science is one of the best. I think um, agro as well actually is uh, is ranked uh, 30 in the world right now. So they're quite quite high ranked as well. Uh, computer science uh, is uh, <clears throat> number one in Denmark at least when it comes to studying computer science. And you can do uh, different specializations. So you can do algorithms, cryptology, data intensive systems, human computer interaction, programming languages, Obvious computing and interaction and bioinformatics. And we actually have more specializations coming here in 2021 because they're expanding a lot. Um, so when you do a computer science, uh, it's very flex flexible. It's a, they have a very flexible study structure. So you do, your, you do two specializations and you have a master thesis and you do some electives. The elective, you, you, can, you can choose to do it actually how you want to. You do it together with the, with the, with the study program and find out how to, to, to do everything. So you, you get the electives and the specializations that you wish for. So it's also a possibility to go abroad uh, on the third semester uh, to study at another university if you want to do even more, uh, visiting uh, even more countries. But it's also also possible to do uh, bachelor courses if you think there's something on the bachelor level that you find interesting. Uh, and a lot of electives can also be at other study at computer engineering or mathematics or at other places here at Aarhus University. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a flexible study structure. Um, and the admission requirements is, uh, is, as you can see here, very specific actually. So you need 20 ECTS programming 20 ECTS computer systems, 20 ECTS theoretic, theoretical uh, computer science, and 10 ECTS human machine interaction, and 20 ECTS basic subjects in mathematics. So it's not because you need to have the courses that we talk, like we talked about the history student, can she and her, her get into to, uh, human security? You need to get your course descriptions so detailed that the the admission board can look at it and say, yeah, I think I can see some programming here. I can see I can, you work with computer systems here. And that's what they base their judgment on. So it's always an admission board looking at the application and your course descriptions to see if you got enough ECTS or you got the courses uh, so you can get in. So it goes uh, for all uh, the degrees that they look at the, look at your course, at the course descriptions you have uh, to see if you're eligible. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So okay. this is the uh, so, and this is this is how they choose and uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, really interesting questions and answer session. Uh, so th that will be the end of our Q and A session.
Yes. And you, like, uh, as a reminder, you can still connect to Miss Saragram, we uh, like from the email that. He, Please do uh, so. Yes. I would be happy if I got some emails, and <laughs> and especially if you have very specific questions. Sometimes it's uh, it's uh, easier to do this in writing, um, yeah. and we would be happy to that. to yeah. to answer you. Okay, you can always email her. And thank you for watching. Thank you for joining our uh, session. Okay. Uh, see you in our next session. Thank you, yes. Miss Sarah Graham, for the thank presentation. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day and enjoy. Have a nice day. <laughs>